Raven needed a miracle pass from quarterback Tate Bennett to escape with a 15-14 victory over Field two weeks ago. But the Ravens have definitely put that game in the past with the win over Norton last Friday, and now they're getting ready to go on the road to face a talented Streetsboro team. Meanwhile, the Rockets are coming off of a 48-21 victory over Coventry to improve the 6-2 for the first time since the 2008 season. Playoff points are at stake in this one, as both squads are currently eligible for the postseason. The Ravens in Division 3 and Streetsboro in Division 4. I sound like a broken record when I say this in all these videos, but Streetsboro senior running back Dorian Williams is the Rockets' best offensive weapon. Against Coventry last week, as he has against pretty much everyone he has come across, Williams exploded for major runs and a number of touchdowns in order to secure a win. If Ravenna can stop him, then it's hard to envision Streetsboro scoring enough to keep up. Ravenna got its best effort of the season last week in the ground game and a win over Norton. The Ravens churned out 325 yards on 39 carries from its unit in a 39-6 victory over the Panthers. Four Ravens ball carries had over 50 yards rushing in the win. If the Ravens can get that kind of output again this Friday, then Streetsboro could be in for a lot of trouble. Ravenna turned the ball over too many times against Field, and that can't keep happening. It didn't ultimately cost Ravenna the game, but it took a 99-yard drive and a miracle TD pass with 30 seconds left for Ravenna to win. The Ravens were much better with the ball last week, but they still do have a tendency to turn the ball over. I don't know if I'll ever count on seeing anything like that Field game again, but just in case, it couldn't hurt to hold on to the football. It's the second edition of the Pollock Bowl this Friday as Mogador travels to take on Southeast, an offensive coordinator and former Mogador head coach, Scott Pollock, for what could just be a county division championship game. Both teams are 5-0 in the league, but Southeast has by far the toughest schedule to finish. While Mogador takes on East Canton in Week 10, the Pirates have to travel to the fast turf of Woodridge. Mogador senior running back Gary Strain has quietly put in together a fantastic season. He took another step last Friday with 197 all-purpose yards and three touchdowns against Ritztown. It seems like Mogador has had the same exact running back operating under a different name for the past five decades or so, and Strain is just the latest. He's great back, and Southeast will have a challenge slowing him down on Friday. It seems like Mogador has historically had trouble defending against good passing teams, and Southeast has shown the ability to do just that. Pirates threw for just 152 yards last Friday in a win over Waterloo, but that was because they were ahead 34-0 at the half and decided to just run every down in order to turn the clock over the final two quarters. Let me answer this question quickly. No. The stage is not too big for Mogador. I know that the Wildcats are traveling to Southeast this Friday to play in what is likely the biggest test between them and a league title. This is Mogador football, and there is really no such thing as a stage that's too big for that particular program. Southeast is moving the ball extremely well through five weeks of play in the county division. Against Waterloo, the Pirates racked up 485 yards of total offense, but more impressively, 18 first downs in the first half alone. It's more than most teams a total in an entire game. What that tells me is that Southeast can control the ball, and more importantly, control the clock. Mogador has a, has a typically salty defense, so it should be fun to see if Southeast can reproduce those kind of numbers this Friday. Southeast also has a great defense, holding league opponents to an average of just 12 points a game in its six victories. To date, however, the Pirates have not seen an offense like the Mogador Wildcats, a team averaging 41 points a game, including two 60-plus point efforts in the past three weeks. This is one of the best Mogador offenses in recent memory, and I see a similar output to 2011, where Mogador put up 28 points, albeit an ultimately losing effort. The whole field should be jumping this Friday as the Wildcats travel southeast for the first time since the Pirates joined the county division last year. On top of that, this Friday's senior night for southeast, you know that head coach Steve Sigworth will have his team playing like it just popped a bunch of caffeine pills right before kickoff. I would not be surprised to see southeast come out fast and look to deliver the first blow. After that, I really do expect Mogador to, to absorb the hit and both teams to settle down for a seriously good football game. That's it for this week inside the PTC. My name is Colin Harris. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at RC Sports Now or check www.recordpub.com for more information. Thanks, and I'll see you next week inside the PTC.